This is Mark Bell from Supertraining.tv, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West, answering more questions for the Power Project. Let's get right to it. We got a question from Rhino Shala, and uh, he is uh, asking a question about modifications to the West Side Barbell program. I will tell you firsthand what I've heard Louis Simmons say <laughs> when uh, asked uh, if they can modify. The West Side Barbell Method. He says, who in the fuck are you to modify me? <laughs> I really like that quote because he's basically just saying, hey, who, who have you trained? Who have you worked with? What's your experience? I know my system works and why are you changing it? Now, while I think that that quote is funny, I don't always think that it's true. I think that in this case here, it sounds to me like you start to figure out uh, what's right for you. And within the West Side Barbell Program, the whole beauty of the entire thing is that it allows for variation. It allows for lifters to grow within the system. Uh, so you said here you've been doing it for six months. That's a good enough time to know whether it's working or not. So if you feel like it's not working, then it probably isn't. It could be due to the fact that you're doing some things improperly, but it could also be uh, that the system may or may not necessarily be for you. What I would say is that uh, the answer always lies somewhere in the middle. You're probably doing a couple things wrong. You're probably not doing a million things wrong. Probably just a couple small things. What I see from a lot of people is faulty and shitty box squatting. And that will make the, almost make the entire system crumble because the system is um, based off the cornerstone of the West Side Barbell program becomes the box squat because squatting helps your deadlifting and squatting helps your squatting. So by doing a box squat, Oftentimes, not for everybody, but most of the time, when doing a box squat properly, it'll not only increase explosive strength and power in the box squat, it'll increase explosive strength and power in the deadlift and in your free squat. Now, you mentioned here, you feel like you're not getting great carryover, and you also said uh, that you noticed that when you mixed in uh, some free squatting on your dynamic day, everything seemed to be fine. Well, again, you know, let's have you use your head. The whole point of the Power Project is to empower each and every one of you out there to make you realize and understand that you may know a little bit more than you give yourself credit for. So, if you're doing free squats on dynamic effort day, good for you. Good thinking. Um, way to use that noggin of yours and uh, way also not to give up on the West Side Barbell program. You just decided to make one small change and well bam you got some results. Uh, so I like that. I think that's great. That's what this is all about. You guys should know how to lift. You should know how to train. Hopefully I can guide you through it but ultimately it's going to be you, the lifter, you, the guy in the gym, you're the one busting your ass. You're the one working hard. You're the one paying for the membership, paying for all the bullshit supplements. You're the one putting gas in your car and getting your ass to the gym and working hard. You're the one out there doing it. So having said all that, I'm glad that you're putting a lot of thought into this. And I'm glad that you're, um, you're making an effort to try to make yourself better. Because if you're not going to make the effort to get yourself better, then really what's the point? And I, I, like, I like that you guys are, are flooding me with some questions like this. Um, but I think that you guys should think a little bit more obviously sometimes. Instead of trying to think outside the box and think, hey, what if I attach the band to that? What if I attach... I'll let, leave that stuff to me. You want somebody to do something retarded, leave it to me. You want somebody to get injured, just leave it to me. And then I'll let you know. <laughs> but... uh you know, you guys got to think a little bit more simply. You got to think a little bit more in terms of uh, what's going to be best for you. Now, if you're doing uh, dynamic effort squats with no box, 
and you feel like you're getting results, what's the only thing that matters? What's the only thing we're after here at The Power Project? We are after some goddamn results. We want to see people hitting PRs. I want to see everybody hit a PR. So, uh, if you feel like doing uh, dynamic effort squats uh, without a box, boxless box squats as I like to call them, um, then do them. You know, you, there's no reason why you can't do a three-week wave of uh, free squat, then throw back into box squat for three weeks, then maybe squat into chains for three weeks. You could just change it up. You know, it doesn't have to always be the same thing. That's kind of a whole part of the conjugate system is that there is room for a lot of change. Um, looks like you also had another question down here. You said, uh, what do you think about doing repetition work on dynamic effort bench? Uh, you said, you know, that Jesse, and I, Jesse Burdick and I have played around with that. Um, that's more of like an injury prevention thing. Um, if you have two or three really good dynamic effort bench, bench sessions in a row, that was a tongue twister. Uh, if you have a few in a row that are really good and you feel like you're moving fast, but then you're also feeling like, hey, my shoulders are getting beat up, my elbows are getting beat up, my this is getting beat up, my that is getting beat up, uh, then it may be time to make some changes and it may be time to introduce some repetition work. When we say repetition work, it's kind of pathetic because really it's five sets of five or six sets of four or four sets of six. That's not even really a whole lot of repetition if you think about it. But if you look at it, the total number of reps is basically the same between five sets of five, eight sets of three, and so on. Uh, you're dealing with like 20 something reps, 25 reps or so. Um, and those are done with a little bit more weight. Um, if you normally, uh, you know, if you're normally using uh, 55, 60 percent on your dynamic effort day uh, with the repetition effort method that I utilize and that Jesse Burdick utilizes and that some others use, uh, you're going to want to bump that percentage up by about five to ten percent, and you're going to do the sets with the same weight. So let's say you're going to do 315 for five to five, you're going to use 315 for each set for all five reps of all five sets and on top of that um, you can just go right back into your dynamic effort stuff the next week so it's just a way of kind of we think of it as restoration in a way active rest or a, a deload if you want to call it a deload go ahead I'll let you do it this one time um, that could be used for your squat as well that could be put in anywhere on that same note about your squat um, did you know that as a raw lifter, you should be using a heavier percentage. Did you know that? Um, we always say make sure you move the weights fast, uh, but you don't want to be moving fast and furious. You don't want to be, you know, moving around so crazy and chaotic that you're not getting a lot out of it. Do me a favor, add five percent to your dynamic effort training sessions, and throw in an extra rep, and report back to me. That's your homework. And that is it from supertraining.tv, except we have Cliffhanger, who is the only guy to ever, first guy, the only guy to ever do a four-time body weight deadlift, four times his body weight in a deadlift at Super Training Gym. Who's the only guy? The only Super Training member ever to do it. The only Super Training member ever do it is the handsome and unbelievable Ryan Spencer, who has deadlifted, uh, I think, 661 at 165. So hopefully that adds up. Carry the one. I think it adds up. Anyway, we have another cliffhanger question, and this one's a tough one. So start to do your homework, kids, because I'm going to start to pull these out my ass. So get ready. Um... The cliffhanger question is, and I got it tonight in the gym, what is the difference between speed strength versus strength speed? That's your homework. Answer it on YouTube. Make sure you like this on Facebook. Support Power Magazine, thepowermagazine.com, and support the Slingshot, howmuchyoubench.net. I'm out of here.